Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, um, episode 23. Um, you can find us on theseedsofliberty.com, um, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and you can also find that through the, uh, the main website, theseedsofliberty.com. So um, we're absent, uh, Jeremy, today. So I so guess I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> you want to do it? No, no, you, you can do it. You got it. If you wrote it down, you can do it. <laughs> so um, we are covered under the um, Bipcot. No, wait, wait, no, what's it called? The Bipcot. It's the license? Bipcot No Co- No Gov license. Right. You can find more about this at bipcot dot org. You didn't do the military style, but all right. I hate it. <laughs> all right. So, um, <clears throat> so today we're joined uh, by Mark Stevens. Um, he's a uh, volunteerist. He heads up the No State Project radio show, which goes live every Saturday, uh, three-hour show. Um, you can find that through iTunes or through his website, markstevens.net. Um, he spoke uh, recently at the Jackalope Festival. Uh, I was talking a little bit about the Socratic method. <clears throat> and he is an anarchist who helps people, he helps uh, defend people against bureaucratic attack. Um, he goes head to head with judges and lawyers and demolishes them in their own field, which is uh, quite embarrassing. So he's written two books um, Adventures in Legal Land and Government Indicted. So um, we're going to see uh, what kind of fascinating stories we can uh, tease out of his mind. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, thanks a lot for coming on the show. I appreciate the opportunity to be back. It's, it was a lot of fun the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I interviewed uh, last year. I think it was September, and it was the uh, first time I met you. Awesome, awesome conversation. Really enjoyed yeah, it. I, I enjoyed that one. That was. It, I think that's your highest viewed. Uh... It is by far my highest watched video, like 6,000 views, and my second highest is like 600. So wow. <laughs> that, that has been shared like many times. So Yeah, cool. that's awesome. Very cool. So, um so yeah, so Mark, um, maybe we can start off with um, uh, how you became an anarchist, and then we can get into what you what you're up to today. Well, you know, when I moved from Long Island to Phoenix, I fell into the, you know to be as brief as possible. I fell into the patriot kind of mentality, and, and um, actually started helping people with with tax and traffic stuff, and I had some success with that. But the more I dug into it. I couldn't get certain contradictions. I couldn't clear up certain contradictions, and um, it's like a splinter in your brain, huh? Well, yeah, well, because a friend of mine had said, "Why do you oppose the United Nations when it's really the same thing as the federal constitution?" Because they already took thirteen sovereign states, and 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 I couldn't resolve that. That and 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 the the problem with with the initiation of force and taxation, and and it was. Wow. It was when I read about sovereign immunity and judge judicial immunity and whatnot where I, I learned that judges had and, and the judges were ruling that there was no duty to protect anybody and it kind of blew my mind and knowing that the only thing that makes you a citizen is the reciprocal obligations of protection and allegiance and that they're saying there is no duty to protect, you know, just the whole thing collapsed. And then I read Lysander Spooner, the no trees in the Constitution. Oh, of man. That's nice. what said, yeah, that, you know, <laughs> the Constitution has no inherent authority. If it has any authority at all, it's only as a contract. It doesn't even purport to be a contract. And mm. even if it was a contract, it was, it only bound those who signed it, and they're all long dead. And, mm. and, and that pretty much was the nail in the coffin, and there was, no, there was no turning back. It was basically how do you, for myself, I think it's abhorrent and immoral to initiate physical force and violence, you know, and, and, and threats of that against other people. That's not how I conduct myself in my personal life. And I think that's just wrong. And I couldn't reconcile that, like what Spooner talks about, too. I couldn't reconcile that with what uh, people called government were doing. And so uh, that's really it in a nutshell. And, uh, and, and viewing them as just people was a big part of that. The Spooners writing that they're just a gang of killers, thieves, and liars. They're just people and uh, adopting, you know, the, you know, well, not adopting anymore in, in the conditioning that the double standard that is okay to lie, steal, kill, and cheat people if you call yourself a government. That we go, I think we all go through that. How do you resolve the conflict that none of the basic principles of right and wrong apply to people called government? Mm-hmm. And I just I said, you know what? I gotta let it go. It's time to grow up. 
and and that's that's pretty much it. And I think we all go through that result when, when we start examining these contradictions in our head. It inevitably leads to anarchy. Yeah, you 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 nailed it. That's one of the best uh, things I've heard uh, one of our guests say. You know, uh, Donnie, uh, one of our guests for the uh, Force to Freedom show we do on Wednesdays. Uh, he uh, uh, it's a ex military voluntarist show, and um, he uh, the other day we were talking and. And he really said something I've never heard before, and you just kind of said it earlier. It's, uh, you know, the thing you can tell these Constitution, these people that are, like, clinging to the Constitution is, like, the same premise that you could use to make the Constitution holds up to make world government, a one-world government. Right. So, like, you have to realize that you can't have a limited one-world government. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the limited communism doesn't work that's that's a big thing i tell uh people too is like why are you so fervently pushing limited communism because they don't realize that the constitution is essentially communist yeah you know it's so anybody who is opposed to the united nations would be opposed to the you know like the netherlands have a confederation um and then here in the u.s you have that and of course you've got the same thing in canada uh, you'd have to be opposed to that, uh, and and you know so, you know you mentioned communism. You mentioned to someone here in the U.S. that they are a socialist or a communist because they support the police and the military and high school football, I, you know, and and college football and basketball, <laughs> and you know the horror of it. I'm like well, that's. Uh, I, you know, that's the way it is. You know, oh, you think uh, black water's good? You're a fascist. So, um, <laughs> it, it, it's those contradictions. I, I've, I've been having a hard time trying to scope the word for it, but the thing I've I've landed on is everyone say say, oh, Denmark's socialist, or France is socialist, or China's communist. No, they're not. None of them are that. They are all f fascistic or. I don't communo fascist is like the only way I could it's like communism or it's fascism draped in the cloth of communism it's like we're going to do this for the people and it's like pure fascism <laughs> Wait, you, you when you look at the communist manifesto yes like the United the, States the, is there they've yeah. been there <laughs> Wait, no well you would say that they're on their way but the communist manifesto the result of communism was a stateless classless society and that certainly doesn't exist in china never existed in russia well, so no, because... they, were they really i think what you had was like you was getting to it was it was a uh, and that's the thing there is no government but you have these people called government that are working with big business well, yeah, the richest people, the, the, Moscow has the most per capita billionaires in the world. They didn't make that money after Gorbachev let, let the Iron Curtain back a little bit. They were, those are families that have always had that money. When the Bolsheviks took over, it was who owned all the, the coal mines, who owned all the, they, they never lost control. They bought off the Bolsheviks. Well, the, the, the super rich, the, the elite, they've always had the power since you know, you go back to ancient, you know, to Greece. They well, no, no, the thing is, is no, no collective, no, no whatever that elects a leader to go in and take control is not going to get co-opted. Uh, it's, they're always going to get co-opted by the rich. You're not going to be able to vote the rich's money away. That's what people don't understand. And when I say rich, I'm saying in the, the sense of people that have used government force to make their money. So like, I have an open challenge that still hasn't been answered yet in this entire 23 episodes. Show me one billionaire living on the planet that has not used government force to obtain that wealth. It is impossible to do, and I'll give you $50 in Bitcoin if you can prove me wrong. Well, that's a, that's a fool's bet. I mean, you look at Bill Gates and Microsoft. I mean, you know, look at, uh, look at uh, Sam Walton. No, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 I believe you. I'm saying I agree with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree yeah, you with can't you. win. Like you can't oh, win no. that because Microsoft used copyright laws. They used all kinds of protectionist stuff, IP laws, et cetera, et cetera. That's government yeah. force. That's government force. The same way with Sam Walton. Walmart is a trademarked company. I can't open up a Walmart across the street. So that's government force. The government will come in and say, you can't have a Walmart here. Yeah, the governments have just have always been gangs 
that carried out, you know, the will of the super rich, the super rich wanting to stay super rich. So you look at the, the, the people called uh, Parliament in England. They started out as the as the as the barons. They started out as the you know the 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 wealthy the you know the feudal the feudal landholders. So it, it, well, yeah, it, we the have Ro the same thing today. When the Roman Empire collapsed, I'm sorry, we're not letting Danilo Danilo talk. But <laughs> right, when the Ro right. Roman Empire <laughs> collapsed, all these these all the all, all the <laughs> raving bands of warlords and stuff they gave lands to their generals and stuff and said, "This is yours. This is yours." and Aristocracy was born that out of that. You know, you had that power vacuum; it got filled. Yeah, I would definitely contend that we are living in the modern day aristocracy, and you know, instead of this divine right of kings, the divine right of politicians, <laughs> and it's fundamentally yeah. different, right? It's the religion of statism, right? It's, what is uh, it? What does I say, Danilo? I say this almost every episode. If you think your vote matters as much as David Rockefeller, you're fucking lunatic. <laughs> you are insane. You need to go jump in a sewer main and shut the lid because you have you don't belong in this planet if you can't even conceptualize that. A multi-billionaire has more political pull than you will ever have with your single vote. Yeah, and the thought that you as somebody who is forced to pay them, have any control over what they do. So you got to get out there I, and vote, I, Mark. You have to get out there and vote because <laughs> Donald Trump is going to change everything, Mark. Oh, and Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Sanders, he's going to give free college to everybody, uh, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I just look at it that, in, in to me, these are the most important facts when we're discussing these things. They're just men and women forcing us to pay them. It's observable. It's true. It's undeniably true. Uh, no one has been able to uh, prove that they're a government. They are just men and women forcing us to pay them. And the idea that when we're being forced to pay on a threat of jail, that we have any power to change things other than not paying them, is just... <laughs> It, it, it's absolutely ludicrous. It's a testament to how well that they have conditioned us through the media, through their schools, and through churches, that you have to somehow obey them and that they're ordained of God, all that nonsense. And No, there are men and women forcing us to pay them. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's slowly becoming more and more accepted that people see that at least that they know that voting because it goes down every year they're seeing that voting is a waste of time which is why some places like australia it's, it's mandatory <laughs> mandatory <laughs> yeah that'll, that'll fix things right <laughs> just yeah. force people to uh to to impose their opinions on their neighbor that's going to fix <laughs> it, it <laughs> seems like a good thing you know like going to new hampshire and voting in people it, it seems like if you just were, can get control of the political process, and not to be a, a naysayer or anything, but it, let's say you took over a town, say it was New Hampshire, you, 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 you have anarchists who now are in office and are shutting things down. Mm -hmm. What do you think the county government's going to do? What do you think the state government's going to do? They're going to come in immediately and, to, and, and, and retake the town and take oh, control. Rezone it. <laughs> oh, so, well, yeah, no yeah, because they'll just have the county run everything. Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, we're, well, they 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 shut down the police department. Okay, that's more sheriff's budget. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, so it, to me, the, the the not accepting the double standard is great, but it's only part of it. It's it's what are you going to do to get rid of this gang of killers, these and liars, and. The reason why they're in place is because of compliance. Enough people still comply with them. It's still seen as the right thing to do. But mm -hmm. once enough, so I think the choice has to be made. Some of what we do has got to be non-compliance. They stay in business. I shouldn't say business. They stay in control because people comply. So stop complying to the degree that won't get you immediately shot. Mm -hmm. and, and as we t I talked on another show earlier where when enough people, when it becomes fashionable, when it becomes cool not to comply with them, then the bandwagon effect should take over and the mm -hmm. masses will follow like they always do. Yeah. Yeah, it only requires like, what, 10 or 20% of a very passionate minority for everyone else to just come on board because most people do not really do their own critical thinking and they just follow whatever the, you know, 
the really uh, you know forthcoming and passionate people are doing and they're like all right let's just follow them they look like they know what they're doing <laughs> they're gonna follow the trend right well, yeah yeah trend, look so. at look at star wars all right when star wars first came out how many people were star wars crazy phobo star wars of files and now everyone's uh-huh. like oh i've loved star wars my whole life it's like no you haven't <laughs> no you haven't just like with the uh with if it was a little bitty stupid... no-name show you'd be like oh those are no one never heard of that movie <laughs> yeah it's back when, when with star trek 30 years ago who was a big Babylon 5? There's, I knew like two people that were into it. And, and now you get this, it's, it's a bandwagon and there's nothing you can, that's just part of, of the herd mentality that, that we have as a species. It, what all we can do is, is, is try to cash in on that, so to speak. And, and through what you're saying, Danilo, and that's what's missing. It is, it is the capacity for rational thought to critically, to question things. And, and what I get all the time is that for some reason, even though prosecute judges, uh, uh, attorneys will say that you should never give a prosecutor a free pass on any of his arguments. Once you mention the foundation, the very foundation holding up everything, that is territorial jurisdiction, that their laws apply to you because you're physically in Arizona or New York or wherever the hell you happen to be, that somehow that is not something oh i can't it's like critical thought and analysis is completely out the window we have to have this sacred cow (laughs) and and, and it boggles my mind because the only excuse that people give these attorneys who are taking 20 30 whatever thousands of dollars hey attorneys are so expensive people are mortgaging their damn houses to pay for them and yet they'll give the prosecutor a free pass on that why the only excuse that they will give you the only one I've ever heard is it will enrage the judge. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's the only excuse but... they've ever given me. I said, "Well, but don't you real? But don't you recognize at least that that this should be challenged?" Right. And you can't do. No, yeah. I, you can do that. I do it every day. I've had people do it all over, and, and, and we had someone do it in Germany and got something thrown out. So. Uh, implied it, consent the, is. I, I feel like implied consent is the crux of the argument. Am I wrong? It, it, I don't look at it. I think what they're – yeah, that's the, the phrase that they use. And, and so that comes up all the time. And so I had Nicholas Court, who is a, uh, a deputy attorney general in New Hampshire, and he was trying to make a case that, that, it, that the law doesn't apply just because the law says so. He says it's more than that. It's the history of the people. So I think that's what you're getting at, this so-called implied consent. So he said it was the history. So I, I try not to be sarcastic with him, and I said – Oh, is the history be, that you're talking about here the fact that you force everyone in New Hampshire to pay you on the threat of jail? Is that the history? <laughs> you, you, so you, you've got the inference or you've got the argue, the opinion, and then you have to compare it to the facts. So this idea of a social contract, this idea of implied consent, you can't get away from the actual evidence. The evidence tells me you pay or go to jail. Mm-hmm. Anyone who disputes that, okay, take the dry, take the license plate off your car. See what happens. <laughs> See what happens, right? <laughs> because it is undoubtedly a tax. And when you right. take that off your car, you're saying, "F well, you, Paulie, I'm not going to pay you." Yeah. So, well, I mean, how else are they going to pay for the cops to find reasons to steal more money for you <laughs> from you? <laughs> well, it's like Spooner said. Any, any, anybody with enough money can pay men with guns to steal more money for them. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, the Romans, and you always split the booty with them. They're not, you know, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. But that, you, you see, you've, you've, you've got, on one hand, you've got, you've got the data, you've got the facts. And from the data, you're supposed to draw your conclusion, your inference. And they're doing it backwards. They're trying to say, well, we have a social contract. We've got implied consent, but they're they're completely ignoring the data, the evidence that says the complete opposite of that. So what was it? Oh, you're telling me that everybody is? We all got together and decided we we're going to force ourselves on the threat of jail to pay to pay ourselves? That I mean, come on, we're not six years old. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's a Rothbard. That's a Rothbard line right there. It's like uh, 
you know, if we are the government, anything that the government does to us, we're just merely doing it to ourselves. Right. The so, Jews committed suicide, right? In, uh, yeah. <laughs> no. It's just like when your brother grabs your hands to stop hitting yourself. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, Mark, can you, can you explain the Socratic method that you use when you go into the courtroom setting? Sure. I, I'm happy to. Yeah. It, uh, I think this is kind of the, the key. And, and part of the Socratic method, you see, it, it lends itself very well to all areas of scientific inquiry, and particularly well in court, because even though you're told the prosecutor has the burden of proof, most people just give that up and let the pro and, and and make statements and take a burden on themselves, and that's always bad because if you're dealing with a master manipulator and you take a burden on yourself, you're going to be toast. Mm. So the Socratic method follows the, the logic and the rationale that the proponent of an argument bears the burden of proving it's true, not the, the, the individual who disagrees with it. The burden always stays on them. So the idea is to just ask questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how, to get them to be able to verify whether their argument is true or not. And so you're asking um, clarification questions also. Clarification questions are absolutely essential so when you hear me go through this on my call of shames, because you're dealing with people who are absolutely to their core dishonest, they're, you know in advance they're going to accuse you if you're nailing them on something, they're going to accuse you of taking their words out of context and twisting them. So like an IRS agent said to me that uh, that he had evidence proving that the Constitution and laws applied to someone because they had, he said they had evidence. So I asked him what that evidence was. And he said it was, well, we have the wage reported income. And most people would freeze there and think, well, yeah, you do have the 1099. Damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I wanted to do a clarification because I recognize this as really, really nonsensical. So you want to get your <clears throat> clarification. And I always ask the clarification question with a little bit of, you know, snarkiness. Because they think that they're scholars when they say that's, oh, yes, the wage reported income proves the Constitution. But when I say it, or you say it, it loses its veneer of legitimacy. So I read it back to him for those two reasons. Let me see if I understand your position here correctly. You're saying that the wage reported income proves the Constitution applies to Chris. Yes. Oh, now the Socratic method is not to make a statement saying you're full of crap. That makes no sense. What do you think? I'm two years old over here. What the? That doesn't get you anywhere. So you just stick to the question. Why is that true? Why do you believe that that's true? So that's what I asked him. Now he fumbled around a little bit and eventually said, I, I don't know. Okay. So now we can recap. See if I... You spoke too soon when you said you had evidence proven code applied, didn't you? So, and then of course you moved to your resolution. So the, the right thing to do would be to, to block, uh, to stop this until you are qualified and have such evidence. And and, and that's where I think it's so effective because I never have to disagree with him. I don't have to come off as argumentative, which also helps because they can accuse you of raising a frivolous argument and you're just asking questions. So like I've said so many times, in that situation, the Socratic method is really effective because you know they're going to lie and say, that's a frivolous argument. You say, please quote this frivolous argument you think I'm making. That's right, jackass. I asked you a question. Do you know the difference? So now well, I can this, show this, They get so defensive. You know, whenever you have an idea yeah. in your head and someone questions you, it's like, oh, shit, if I answer this, I'm too, sca I'm too scared to admit I'm wrong. So you put up the blocks, and it's there like... You go. It's a lack of humility. They're so arrogant that even though being wrong with someone I'm working with is so inconsequential... He's not going to lose any. They can kill you. They don't lose a day's pay. It, it, it's completely inconsequential if there's evidence or not, to, and if they can go after this guy. They've got seven million other people on the docket. It doesn't matter. But it's the arrogance. It's personal to them, 
should be wrong. So. Well, you know, I, I had this argument, and it, it hasn't been really beaten, uh, to my knowledge, by anybody that I've given it to. And, you know, everyone wants to try to chip the government up and, and say, oh, you're you're doing something unconstitutional. And Danilo already knows where I'm going with this. But uh, the, the thing is, is you asked two questions. Um, who interprets the Constitution? Do oh, you're you know? rescuing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who interprets the Constitution? Uh, well, there's contradictions there because there's supposed to only be nine people alive that are authorized to to. <laughs> okay, no, 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 I understand that, but who do they work for? Who do they... Who, yeah, who, who do the yeah. nine people work for? Well, <laughs> supposedly, uh, well, they're working for the rich elite... So no, 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 no. What, what, what is, who, pay, who gives them a paycheck? <laughs> who gives them a paycheck? That comes from the Treasury, so it would be the executive branch. So the, the, so government, the government. So the, the government, government yeah. pays. Okay, so, so the government is the sole arbiter and decider and decides what's constitutional, right? You, you agree? Okay, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything they do is constitutional. <laughs> Everything the government does is constitutional. And if it's, because not, consti they, if it's not constitutional, they're going to amend. They're going to make an amendment. Exactly. <laughs> now it's constitutional. <laughs> what, did, what did I say last episode? You weren't here, Danilo. I said you can get it. You can you can storm the keep and get on the castle yards and scream at the king. You broke your own laws, and he can say, "Oh, really? <laughs> yep. No, I didn't." New law. <laughs> New law. So. Well, when the president does it, it is not illegal. Right. I'm well, sorry, yeah, I, you have to think about it my, like this. My worst the government impression. <laughs> well, when the president does it, it is not illegal. Oh, it's not yeah. getting anything. I'm not a crook, but how is your how is your paycheck paid, Mr. President? You know, you know, Mark. Before I, um, you know, when I when I stumbled on your YouTube channel, you know, a couple of years ago, I think you're the first guy that consistently said. That, that people in government or are or especially politicians are liars, thieves, and murderers. You know, you say you say that consistently, like you know, pretty frequently on your videos, and it really hit me. Like, wow, that's so true. You know, and and people have to stop viewing them as like these noble politicians, because that's a euphemism, right? It's like calling someone a hero for going over and defending the United States in Iraq, right? So you have to say, you know, what they really are. To strip away that you know that honey encrusted uh, image. <laughs> so yeah, well, it, 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 Confucius said that the the start the, the beginning of wisdom is to call things by their by their right, right name. Oh, one of my one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. <laughs> and and if they were a government, there would have to be reciprocal obligations of allegiance and protection. And we know, f you pay me, does not create those obligations. And it, it, it's a, yeah, it, it, people want to believe that because the alternative is too horrifying. And mm -hmm. because, again, it's a two step problem that we have. First, we have to be able to convince people to critically anal analyze what they're looking at and not accept any sacred cows and just look at the evidence. Once they realize that the evidence is that they're just men and women forcing us to pay them, and that's it. They're not senators. Yeah. They're not presidents. They are vile criminals. Mm -hmm. It's not a military. They're criminals. It's mm -hmm. not a police force. They're criminals. They are a gang of kill season lies. Once they realize that and they accept that, like, okay, you got me. Then you move <laughs> on to the, the, the pro – because I spoke to a, fr a family member who does accept that anarchy is the only rational way for people to interact. No rulers, no hierarchy. He gets that. His problem is how do we get to that state, you know, voluntary society, and and what about X, Y, Z? And I said, oh, look, you're one of the smartest guys I know, and he is. He's off the charts. We know that in this equation, X is 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 government, and we know X couldn't possibly be a solution to any of these thousands of problems. Just take it off the table. All right. Give it some thought on how you would fix problem X or on problem Y because you know this is not a solution. You have to actually think about it, and therein is part of the problem like you mentioned about the thought process. I don't want to think about this. I want someone else to take it 
for because what did even Homer Simpson said 20 years ago? We don't have to, I'm going to paraphrase. We don't <laughs> have to think, dear. That's why we elect, you know, politicians. <laughs> well, people want to uh, I don't know what to say. It's like people want to go on easy mode. And, you know, it's like even if you get them to admit all these things, all these rational Socratic based questionings and they have no answers and they finally say, OK, you're right, but nothing's going to change. That's one of the responses you get or you get uh, the indoctrination, you know, gl gl glossy eyed. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're a crazy you're a kook, blah, blah, blah. This many people can't be wrong. You might be right, but <laughs> this, this many people can't be wrong. Oh, that's a funny one. You, you, you <laughs> might be right, but there's 10,000 billion other people that think you're wrong. So it's like you're appealing to authority and you're. You know, yeah, you're, just, you're, you're, just, and just, you're just making a bandwagon a, fallacy. Just, just list of fallacies. Really. <laughs> go, go down. Yeah. The line. <laughs> yeah. I, I have less trouble educating people and getting them to use the Socratic method and analyze things critically than I do in being able to then inspire people to do something about it. I have no problem admitting when I am a failure or something. Mm -hmm. I've gone in front of a number of of these uh, uh, city councils. I did one. I was I was completely bald at the time, and got them to say that their evidence was jurisdiction because we said so, which was quite something. But I've not it's been able fiat. to. Even, yeah, because we said so. Oh, That's fiat. So, <laughs> so you're not actually a, a, you're not actually a government. You're just a criminal. And I would be fully morally justified in shooting you if you attack oh, me. <laughs> okay? Oh, but you, but no, no, you can't use the law now. You're just a thug. You're a guy with a gun. And if you're going to attack me, I'm going to defend myself. That's why it's non compliance and we have to shoot back. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been a dismal failure in being able to motivate and inspire people to do the same thing at city councils. I, hopefully, two people have done it in three years. So, uh, eventually it'll pick up. My one of my videos, or someone you, will. You do don't it. shit where you eat. You don't shit where you eat, my Mark. <laughs> so it's kind of hard going into your city council when they know. Ah, we know exactly where this guy lives, and we have the police department, and we can well, harass the shit out of him. We can park a cop car outside of his house, and he has no way to uh, st do anything about it. I was stalked by Mesa PD because I was dumb enough to go into the police department with my camera and ask some questions, and uh, uh, they put me on the threat to officer safety list for a while. I'm probably still oh, there. So <laughs> I didn't let them stalk me to a point where you know I walked home because I was you know, I was a mile or so away. I, but I will tell you this. I understand that, and I get it. I do. <laughs> so I tell people, you don't have to do a city council meeting in the – same area you live. I live in Mesa. You, there, none of the videos that I have are in Mesa except for the cops. I go to Scottsdale and I went to Tempe. So, and I make sure that I'm not the one driving. So, uh, you do have to take some precautions. But, you know, you st people, we need to be able to at least question these people. I say, you don't have to, at least pick up the phone and do it. Do you, you know, Send it to me for a call. We have to be able to get people to see us do this. Well, you, because, you think you're going to call Gollum and say, hey, you know that ring you got? It's really <laughs> fucking evil. You should just throw it into a canyon. <laughs> He's going to okay. say, what are you talking about? You need Go away, my precious, and hang up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, and let me address that. Now, now, that city council member, Colby, he was making, he made a similar point saying, do you really think you're going to change our minds? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, no. I go by the evidence. And in 15 years, I've had five police officers leave the force. That doesn't tell me that, that, that that's, it's not, my audience, and this is what I told him. I said, you've never been my audience. Your victims are. <laughs> and what we're trying to do is educate the victims. And I told them point blank, my job as a journalist is to educate your victims because when enough of them know that you have jurisdiction because you say so, they're not going to bother voting. They're not going to pay you. And enough people not paying you, 
you don't have enough police, buddy. You don't have enough agents. Well, it's the, the emperor has no clothes. That's all you have to do is point it out. Right, and the bandwagon takes over. So once that little kid, and I wrote about that in Government Indicted, once that little kid, that one, stands up and says, this idiot's got no clothes. <laughs> now the taboo is broken. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what we're doing, knowing that the people who are sitting, pretending to be council, city council members, pretending to be city attorneys, they're too far gone. Mm. I don't worry about them. It's like me and Danilo and Jeremy, we always tell everybody, when you're debating or making a case for something, you're never making it for that other person. I really don't care what they say back or what reaction they have or if they even accept what I'm saying to be uh, words, to be honest with you. It's always for the onlooker because anytime there's a debate, people listen. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then let me just say something. I, I did a recent post on Facebook of a cartoon, you know, uh, about the military and, you know, a guy going over, shooting up some you know, kid's, kid's father and then and telling, telling the kid as he's crying, like, you know, I'm really a good guy. The politicians told me to do it. I'm just trying to pay for school. <laughs> and, and, you know, it was pretty popular with the anarchists. You know, they're like, awesome pose, cool. One guy, ex-military, one of my friends, <laughs> he, uh, oh, my God, he took a real personal, went off. And, uh and you know it's 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 really amazing how um, and, and like you're right, Dave. Like um, I was responding to him not to change his mind, but just to show people how you know to respond to somebody like that calmly and collectively. And you know, interestingly enough, I actually got a donation because of that post because a guy who was ex-military, actually another ex-military, but he's a volunteer, ex-military guy. He's like, this is a great post. And he donated to me as a result of my interaction with this guy. Cool. So, so yeah, it's um, you know, you're right, Dave. You know, when we do when we do these shows, when we when we talk, when you comment on Facebook, you know, it's so important to do it in public. And you know, you, you know, uh, you uh, Mark, when you record these things, you know, you're not re you know you're not trying to change their minds. <laughs> it's so you can show people how they think, how they act, and and then yeah, you're educating the victims, right? The uh, well, yeah, I have people go, yeah. Can we talk in private or I'll, I'll be in a debate with somebody on, on Facebook or Twitter or whatnot and, and they're like, hey, can we do this in messaging? Yeah, I'm I like, hate that. Yeah, no I'm way. like, no. No way. I'm like, I'll, I'll post the link to the thread. I'm like, you can comment here uh -huh. where everyone can see it. Oh, yeah. Because when you're not playing football, when you're at the house on the couch watching the Packers play the Raiders or whatever, you can <laughs> see who's winning the game. All right? But when you're on that field – you don't see it so much. You might feel a win or a loss, but it's so much easier to play quarterback from the couch. It's <laughs> it is because you can see the whole field. And yeah. and when you're watching two people debate, like if you and if, if Mark and, and Danilo were sitting here debating about what's better, Cheerios or or, or raisin bran. Captain Crunch. <laughs> it tears the roof of your mouth. Let's not get into it. Doesn't look, matter. Look, 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 if if I was sitting here watching it. <laughs> Depending on the reactions and how well they handle themselves and evidence, you can easily see who's winning. Mm -hmm. oh, and I like doing it in real time. I will say that I, I'm not, I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget. I'm not a fan of debates. I, I, I prefer the Socratic method where I'm not taking a position. The well, that's what I mean. I, I I almost never debate anymore. It's always Socratic. It's good. If you if you ever see anything I say, it's always a question mark at the end, or yeah. Hey, can good. you please ask answer that question instead of moving the goalpost or strawmanning me? Yeah, yeah, you know I yeah. get back on what you're saying about doing it here. You know, in in there was someone on the, that came onto the forum who is is just uh, he's a very seasoned attorney. Uh, he's been doing it for at least at least thirty five years. Very smart guy. Um, insisting that there were states and citizens. And I, I, I started a thread just for him, and I laid out my syllogism, my logic, and, and showed that you, 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 to have citizens in a state, you have to have reciprocal obligations of allegiance and protection. That's basic stuff. I said, where's your evidence to prove this? He never, he tried to say, well, I, eh, if I wanted to have a dialogue with you, jackass, <laughs> I would do it in email. I'm not going to do it on a thread where no one else can participate. So someone made a mirror of that. So everyone can participate, you know. And I'm hey, that's a, so I said, well, okay. He 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 gives up, doesn't post on there anymore. And 
I so I've been sending him the same email every week. He's not gonna respond. But oh, wow. I like the I like the, the real time and doing it like you mentioned too, the Socratic method. I don't want look, if somebody is setting themselves up and uh, they know what they're talking about, you don't need fifteen minutes to respond. I maybe I'm a hard ass that way, but when I go, when I talk to these city council members or I talk to a prosecutor or an IRS agent, they are holding themselves out as a damn expert. They are absolutely insisting that their laws apply. Why would you need an email or to be able to do it in writing other than, when I got you on the phone right now, other than to try to formulate some ridiculous non-responsive answer? Even when the question is just yes or no, do you have evidence to support this argument? Just yes or no. I'm not asking for any kind of long drawn out evaluation, okay? Just yes or no. Well, it's not that easy. No, you either, yes, 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 it is. <laughs> you either have the evidence or you do not. Yeah, I had an attorney, uh, just give me a second here. I had an attorney, it was driving me crazy. And I said, look, is your determination or your position that your laws apply is that a to, to, to bill because he's physically in new hampshire is it a matter of objective proof or subjective abstract opinion which one he couldn't give me a straight answer for, he finally said it's an honest to goodness truth i'm not making this up he said it was a notion <laughs> notion a notion. That doesn't sound nice. like legalese to me. Nice. <laughs> I said, are you going to actually go into court? Very, very clear. <laughs> on a notion. I like it. A notion. Uh, <laughs> so, so I try to make things as simple as possible because we all know when we're talking with these people that if we don't make it as simple as possible, that they have an, a, a plausible excuse not to answer by saying it's too this, it's too complicated, it's a compound question. It's a, so you keep it as simple as possible. So that, mm -hmm. like you were saying, the audience knows douchebag is copping out. <laughs> He's dodging it. My favorite question lately has been, do you believe that you need a ruler, someone to rule over you? And you'll never get a yes answer. Ever. I don't think I've ever gotten one yes answer out that's, of that. That's, that's actually not true. It's funny you should say that. I actually have my whiteboard here. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote the question down because I agree. I, I like the question. <laughs> and so I wrote on here, do you believe there should be a ruling class where moral principles do not apply? It's a little more involved, but I think it's more to the, you know, it, it, it makes it more difficult to answer. So my wife answered. Could you read that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and I'm the right. ruler. <laughs> right. Did you right. ask? That's funny. <laughs> so I, I know. No, I know no. The, the big thing is, is, is uh, the big thing is, is, is you have to realize, <laughs> and, and you have to get people to look. We're only talking about moral reasoning here, not pragmatic. This is the moral, not the pragmatic. We understand that there's this huge colossal Leviathan state, and it's going to be hard to take down and do away with, especially the idea in people's heads. Because even if America collapsed, there's going to be millions of statists that want another state, even though they literally just saw their eyes, a state collapse. So it's like, they see this shit going on in, in Greece where like people are rioting 24-7, bread lines, etc., etc., and then they go, it never crosses their mind. Hey, is that ever going to happen here? America! No, no, it's like, oh, that, that's never going to happen here. It's like, so you have to get these, these people to realize we're only making the moral uh, uh, question here. Do you, on moral grounds, believe that you need a ruler or that I need a ruler? Because almost everyone says, no, I don't need one, but there's crazy people out there. Are you yeah. crazy? No. Well, I think if, if you simplify it, and this is, this is what I've done, and I've got a lot of success with this in changing people's minds. Again, we're, we're, you, just like you're asking a question, I'm not saying it's not a good question. I just think that this one cuts right to the heart of the matter. And, and uh, I've asked many politicians this, and boy, they don't like it. And you don't need an answer if you've got an audience and you're recording it. They don't have to answer it. The, 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 the punch is in the question. And it, look, if I did things the same as you, the government types, and I forced perfect strangers to give me money, would you consider me a criminal? 
<laughs> right. That, there's your, uh, now, there's a lot going on there, the implications of that. But what you're, I agree with you, you're making a moral statement. I'm a criminal if I do this. You're a criminal if you do that too, it's because we don't accept the double standard. That's a logical fallacy. Yeah. Uh, that to me, well, if you phrase you get, it that way, is, is a bit more effective. Well, it is if you're talking to a logical and sane person. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 not not if you're talking to someone who's gonna goalpost move and, and straw man because what they're gonna say is you're gonna say uh, uh, if I did the stuff the government does would that be legitimate? And they're gonna say well no, and then I'll say well why? And they'll say well because it wasn't voted on or uh, you didn't have the consent of the governed or etc. All this jingoist lingo that they've got uh, that. Uh, uh, you you get them into lines of reasoning of like how did that person get that authority? How do you give a right that you don't have? The Larkin Rose questions. Yeah, but so, you can so, short circuit uh, that though, Dave. Uh, you, it, to, it, when because you got to cut it off at the double standard. If it's criminal for me, why is it not criminal for you? And it, it, because it looks it looks like a please explain how that's not a double standard. So keep the burden on them and ask the follow question. How is that not a double standard and a logical fallacy? Explain the difference. The only thing that people come out with me, and I've had politicians do this, is they say, ha, ah, we have the law. <laughs> oh, and your evidence that applies to me just because I'm physically in Arizona would be? Mm -hmm. And even some of the things that you mentioned, which are legitimate concerns, just go back to, there are a group of men and women forcing us to pay them. Where is the agreement? Where's the consent? Well, I, so, so. I agree. And, and, and the, the other question I really like to answer, ask other than do you believe that you, you, with capital U, need a ruler? And, and the other question I, need, I ask is are you for taxation? If yes, would you personally come tax me? Spoiler alert, I have an AR-15. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'll ask people that and, and, and they'll say, no, I don't have the authority. And then you get into the line of questioning. Where did that person that tax get authority? Well, because we the people hired him. You just said that you couldn't come tax me, but you mm -hmm. gave that right to someone else. That doesn't make sense. So, exactly. So, um, so Mark, before we uh, go, we're uh, running out of time, but I wanted oh you to. Oh my gosh! I, I wanted you to. Yeah. <laughs> we got about fifteen minutes. All right. So I I, I wanted you to, um, if you could go over the video you made a few months ago. Really, it really, really hit me deep uh, about that girl that um, was saying. Uh, remember, she was it was like going viral, like saying she has no citizenship. She, you know, she doesn't oh. exist. Her parents, right, didn't didn't I guess register, or she doesn't have a social security number, or something like that. And uh, and that was a really great video. I I, uh, I really enjoyed this. Can you can you go into that and you know the background of that? Sure. I, uh, yeah. I I just I only did it because there was so much backlash against her parents, and I and I just yeah. it just seemed to me like. You, I mentioned this on another show. I think you're the, you're, you're you're directing your outrage at the the wrong person. This is your daughter, <laughs> you know the daughter. Why you, and the, the parents? They just what about the people who are putting the restrictions on you? And so, uh, the video goes through like uh, what we mentioned, and I'll go through it briefly. Again, in the full thing, uh, to have a state and a government, you have to have a body politic. And the body politic is made up of citizens. So uh, because a state is the body politic, the government, and the territory. It's the three in combination. And I have that linked on the website too somewhere. So uh, to have a citizen uh, requires, because a citizen is a member of the body politic, owing a duty of allegiance in return for a duty of protection, those are reciprocal obligations, one in consideration for the other where the Supreme Court has actually made a ridiculous statement that citizenship is contractual. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, now, <laughs> because they're just men and women forcing us to pay them, do those facts prove that there's a, a duty of allegiance to protection? Of course not. Forcing someone to pay you doesn't create an obligation to protect them. That's, it, it's just mm -hmm. basic common sense. And so, because there's no duty of allegiance in return for a duty of protection, there is no citizen. Because there are no citizens, there's no body politic. Without a body politic, there is no government, and there is no state. So the only way that these people could prove that they're citizens is to have 
independent corroborating physical evidence of a duty of allegiance in return for duty of protection. No one has that. No one ever will because it's why? Because the facts are dead set against it. They have men and women forcing us to pay them. Listen, That's Mark. It. I mean, you got some some big smart words there, but these colors don't run, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's uh, it's like um, how how do they you know if you uh, the slave owners if they 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 owned like a hundred slaves uh, if if half the slaves were acting up they would beat the other half that wasn't acting up until the other ones did because they knew exactly how to control them. Well, I talked about this on another show, like Malcolm X talked about. You've you've got your three, three types of of slaves. You you've got mm. your field slave or your field negro. You've got your chattel. Yeah. Your uppity. Well, they're all chattel, but they're different different types because you you got the field negro, and then he talked about you got your house negro. Now he's still a slave. The house slave is still a slave, but he's got it more. He, he's got it more comfortable. He doesn't get quite the beatings, so. It's it, it, and then you've got the uppity Negroes, like we would be the uppity Negroes in this scenario because we're talking about hey, both you guys, you're all slaves. The master <laughs> doesn't care if you live or die, and and so uh, I just don't understand. Like if you own, like if you had a plantation, which everyone thinks the South was just a literal plantation, like one percent of the population had slaves, most of them Jewish. A lot of people don't want to talk about that, but. <clears throat> If you had a thousand slaves, a hundred slaves, whatever, what's to stop one of those slaves stabbing you in the throat in the middle of the night, killing you dead, and just all the slaves are like, oh, we don't know what happened. Well, oh, we'll just wait for the next master and kill him. Because it's the allegiance that the house slave had. The house slave would protect mm -hmm. the Mazza. Yeah, you know, yeah. So you well, well, this is what you do. You've got to pit the slaves again. It's divide and conquer. I mean, sure, this is this sure. is old stuff. So that's why you had the house negroes. That's why in Rome, who did the collection in Palestine, the tax collection? Was it the Romans? No, it was the Jews. So that's what you do. You conquer the country. You take over their government, and you put you leave the tax, ba you know, the 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 system in place. Mm -hmm. So you let them, the expendable ones, do the. So now you've got a you've got an allegiance problem. Hey, they're mm -hmm. treating us pretty good. They could really screw things up for us. You know, I, I mean, I know the taxes are at twelve percent, but uh, so that's what you do. You get them fighting each other, which is what we've we, you know what we got going on now. Liberal and Democrat, liberal and Republican. How many times have you said to somebody if they ask you a question, "What are you, are you a Republican?" No, no, I'm not, man. Oh, you're a filthy liberal? <laughs> Can you... Life isn't so black and white. You know, it's... I've nice. been called a liberal communist hippie. And by the same person, also been called a right-wing nut job. <laughs> and I'm like, well, buddy, what am I? Do you, do, can you, are you just playing pin on the donkey here? Pin the tail on the donkey? Like, I'm not in, yeah. your, I'm not in your silly spectrum here. I'm not in your paradigm. Yeah, yeah you know, I had I had someone that had an issue with my politics, and they said, "Wow, what the hell are you a communist? Why would this guy be so against you?" <laughs> communist? I'm not on the political scale. I'm an anarchist. <laughs> you want to blow buildings up? Like, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> and no, no, anarchist. That's the word you need to use. That yeah, but yeah, they'll give you because anarchist has been co-opted. That's why I don't normally ever call myself that. I call myself a voluntarist, an abolitionist, a libertarian. Or I a... like abolitionist too. An abolitionist, yeah, I like that. Uh, you know, and a, it, it's really tough for someone to try to spin that. So I do consider myself an abolitionist also because we're trying to abolish all slavery. Mm -hmm. All of it. We're trying to abolish the field Negroes and the house. Well, look, look, there's there's two types of slaves in this in this world so far. There's chattel slaves where you're chained up, you're you're pure property, right? Right. And then there's tax slavery where parts of your wage is mandatorily taken, or the fruits of your labor is mandatorily taken. The Jews that fled Egypt, they weren't chattel slaves. So, what other slaves were they? They were tax slaves. So you have to think about this. If you're going to make the case. That everyone, if you're going to make the case for slavery, you're a sociopathic evil person. Like you can't, like 
just because slaves built pyramids or, or big mansions or big palaces for kings doesn't mean oh we should rebel yeah railroads we should we should just <laughs> revel in the the the, the the, the, we should revel in the, the majesty of what slave work made. Like, no, it doesn't make it right. No, it, it's uh, it, it's slavery has always existed, and people use that as kind of uh, someone actually used the, that. Uh, well, we've always had slavery, or uh, he was making that argument. It's always been, it always will be, and they did it at Libertopia a few years ago, and uh, it was that he was a former judge, John Gray. And they said, we've always had government, we always will. And, and I don't remember who it was, but people started jumping all over the guy. Oh, yeah, we've always had, had uh, Negro slaves or, you know, African slaves. So it's always going to be that way. Or women were always, you know, uh, you know basically chattel to, to their men. And it's always going to be that way. I, th no, the, slavery is abhorrent, whatever the degree is, that you're, you, know, you gave the two examples. And if you do advocate slavery, then you're either a sociopath or a psychopath, or uh, you've got those tendencies. Exactly. It's just to, to, to say that other people are proper. And that's the thing I have an issue, too, is, is that people is property. Is I, I own myself. Well, that can own, it's a whole other show but, or discussion. I just have a real problem with people as property and rulers and people telling other people what to do. I tell my, my kid, I teach my kids a couple of principles. Love one another and, and do unto others the way you want to be treated. Two is, you're not the boss of me. Yeah. That's too, that's it, too revolutionary, Mark. Come on. <laughs> I, I, it, have you ever heard of the silver rule, Mark? I, I'm guessing you haven't. Is that the, the uh, do not do unto others? As, As you, you would, would not have not done. Do, yeah. yeah, that's that's the golden rule is uh, do unto others as they do unto you. Uh, that's that doesn't really drive well with voluntarism uh, because it says do unto others. But I looked at it, that as loving one another and treating everybody with the same respect. No, no, that I, I, I yeah, want. I get it. It's just if you if you break down the, the the semantics of it, do not do unto others as you would not have done unto you. Sure, I think they're both equally valid. Yeah, I, 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 and and, and I, a I lot think, of people haven't heard the silver rule. I just I've, right. I found it fascinating. I I, I think that uh, Bertrand Russell, and I have to you know get this on the website. I probably should have had it set up so I could have played it. But he, his his advice for future generations was very profound and simple: live by knowledge that's tested, and love. And I'm not. I, I haven't been called a hippie, you know, new age kind of, but, but to me, it, it's all about humility and loving one another and treating others as we want to be treated. I want to be treated with compassion and respect, and that's the way I, you know, I, I live my life by that, and it's a pretty, pretty simple, easy, easy to live by rule most of the time. You know, I, occasionally I get on with a bureaucrat, and I really have to think to myself, do I want if I you know you start getting frustrated like do I really want to be treated like no and so you have to realize there are people too I know they they're lacking a fundamental human part called empathy but <laughs> but do you still want to treat them the way you want it's to that, be treated it's that sociopathy that gets in the way of their humanity so 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 uh, <laughs> Mark we don't yeah. want to keep up too much of your time um, but yes yeah, so we'll just deliver our our final remarks um, but I, I want to go back to you know you were talking about the divisive tactics of the ruling class and you know I think that's so true you know people you know you, you see this all the time in modern politics you know rich versus the poor the gay versus the heterosexual citizen versus the immigrant right black versus white it's, and it's always this false dichotomy of people fighting one another whereas really it's really about like you say you know people who don't want to be ruled and people who you know or people who want to be left alone and people who won't leave you alone basically you know people yeah. who right people with the guns uh, forcing peaceful people to to pay them um, and and I think that's what it really comes down to because I think um, you know uh, Michael Shanklin put it pretty well I, I, he wrote uh, that uh, you know when you love your neighbor or when you love your family and your friends you know you're considered a decent human being when you love the whole of humanity you're considered a voluntarist right <laughs> so we have to in, right we have to spread our sphere of compassion and humanity to everyone, right? Because we're all human beings. That's that's it. You know, we we all basically. I, I like to tell people that 
you know, you have more in common with the average Iraqi than you do with your own political master here in the United States. <laughs> right? That's, yeah, that's, so. that's true. That, that's <laughs> very true. Uh, it, it's, it, it, you look at someone like Mitt Romney and to think that you have anything in common with someone like that, uh, <laughs> right. he has an elevator for his cars. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it was Chris Rock that said that if the average person really knew and understand how the rich, the elite, really lived, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it would it would be bad, and that's I think, and I'm glad you said that. That's I think that believe that's that's the really the key message for anarchy or volunteerism is love one another and and treat others the way you want to be treated. You know, love and respect. It's mm -hmm. not a hippy dippy new age <laughs> thing. It's 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 the most common sense way to live your life. Decent humanity. That's yeah. Right. Uh, you know, so, it, it, uh, yeah. it's only the hardcore Republicans that'll that'll make fun because hardcore Republicans have a fundamental problem with life. They it, 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 they're not pro-choice, they're pro-birth and all that. They don't care about you once you're born. Most you know they they, they idolize and, and have a death cult with the military and the police and. Well, wait, and, wait a second. You're not pro-choice, are you, Mark? I am not a, for abortion. No, okay. I'm, all right. All right. I, I am. I am not for abortion. Because if so, we're gonna have to have a. Little, we're gonna have to continue this and, and beat that contradiction <laughs> out of your head. Um, no, uh, I am. I am against abortion. I know there's a gray area, and I have to remain ag agnostic I, when it comes. I, I've to tried the to issue sum it up. I've tried to sum it up as a male voluntarist. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm not talking about some gender fluid, cisgender, blah, blah blah blah. All this SJW talk. I'm talking about as a male with a penis and testicles. I can never have a baby, so I will never personally have to make the choice of an abortion, unless like I have a wife or something and she gets into a some kind of coma and she's pregnant and I've got to figure something out. So, but I would still have the baby. But so I can't make that choice for an abortion. I can't make that choice for another person. I can't force politicians to make that choice for other people. But I can ostracize and remove those people that have abortions from my life. And I think that's what you have to do. Like, would you hang out with someone? Like, if someone had an abortion, would you hang out with that person? Okay, let's just change abortion to, oh, their wife had a baby. They pulled out some uh, scissors or something and killed the baby right after the baby was born. Would you hang out with that person? No. Well, obviously, no. <laughs> okay, so so it's like you break it down like that. It's like um, contradictionville, city yeah. dot com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Mark, uh, what's your favorite quote of all time? My favorite quote of all time. I ask every guest we have on there. <sighs> I love to put people on the spot. Wow, it, it, are you talking about political quotes? Just favorite quote. Doesn't matter where it's from, who it's from. It could be from General Patton. I don't care. <laughs> well, what jumps out at me is. No one rules when no one obeys. Right. Nice. Yeah, but what if they threw a war and no one came, right? <laughs> I like that, too. I, I wasn't, yeah, but the one, that's good. The one that jumped out at me was uh, no one rules if no one obeys. Well, 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 the first thing that jumps out at me, you know, talking to you is, uh, is Lysander Spooner, you know, the Constitution. If, uh, you know, it either has um, authorized, uh, you know, such a government as we have had or it's, un or it's uh, been powerless. powerless. Right, powerless to uh, to stop it. So either way, it's unfit to exist, right? So, that's <laughs> it's to me that perfectly sums up that. what you do. You know. So so Mark, go ahead, plug away whatever you want to plug. The floor is yours. We'll be quiet and let you go. I appreciate it. the guy. This has been fun. I can't believe what time it is. Wow, that, uh, it went. It, it always uh, the mark of a of a good you know good conversation. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to be back with you. And uh, yeah, it's Mark. The website is markstevens.net. The radio show is the No State Project. Uh, we're live That's every Saturday. It's M-A-R-C. It's not M-A-R-K. Right. M-A-R-C. We spell it correctly. <laughs> well, my and, middle, well. And, uh, well, I'm from a Sicilian background, so the whole, I, it's from the, <laughs> the, the, the Roman spelling. Anyway, uh, they got a few things right. And um, so we're live every Saturday. You ever seen Suicide Kings? <laughs> I don't think so. You need to watch Suicide Kings. It's a good movie. It's got Christopher Walken in it. Oh, I love Christopher Walken. I, I've watched Kangaroo Jack for him. It's a really good movie. Uh, uh, it's a really good movie uh, to to see how uh, 
someone with intelligence can just really fuck over people that are idiots. I think I see maybe a clip of that that's gone on the internet. So I'm like, put your hands up. No. Is that... Is that yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen, I've seen that scene. So I You need to watch the movie. Watch. It's on Netflix, I think. My, my wife, who's the ruler here, <laughs> as you saw, <laughs> <laughs> she, she will not be surprised when I uh, put in the... You know, when I pull up Suicide King. So she knows Christopher Walken is one of my favorite uh, nice. actors. It's a great uh, movie. He, King of New York is his best. I haven't seen that one either. Oh, my... <laughs> I you're, blowing, you're blowing Dave's mind now. <laughs> Don't watch Suicide Kings before you watch King of New York. It's the best walking movie of all time. It's okay. got Lawrence Fishburne in it. It's insane. You gotta I watch it. I just lost all credibility with this guy now. Oh, gosh. It's so, it's one of my favorite movies. Okay. Well, that, I'll, Are you I'll... seriously never seen King of New York? No. Oh, my God. It's, it's like the walking of all walking movies. It's like better... <laughs> Think of the best walking movie. This one shits all over it. Deer Hunter? Yes! Better than Deer Hunter. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. King of New York is his best movie. I'll, I'll check that out. I just for let anyone know if there's anything that, you've, that I have put out publicly and you disagree with that, dissent is always welcome. We're always improving things. We're <clears> always <throat> looking at the data. That's the, that's the scientific way. And you know we come up with more data and we and, and that's what we do the 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 argument should follow the data and usually the data tells you the story and and um uh, and again yeah just a call or email and uh What's your, uh, you got a twitter i don't use twitter i know that calvin does run that off of the website but we we use it just for okay. the web you know for a couple things here and there but uh everything mark, so you can mark contact stevens. me at mark stevens at uh more mark stevens dot net uh join the forum that way and 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 we put on there that yes you can always join the forum but you have to email me a username so I can create the account because I'm not a tech guy and we couldn't stop the spam so we're not blocking accounts contrary to what uh, some people say. Mm, I used to forum admin about twelve forums. I wish I wish I would have known you in an earlier time. I could have oh. set you up. Oh uh, well, yeah. And and just to point out, I, I would I would encourage people to. Use the Socratic method. Don't take a burden upon yourself. And when you're talking to people, you get the common ground on this very easily by asking a question we mentioned earlier. So I encourage people to always ask this question. If I did things like the government types and forced perfect strangers to give me money, would you consider me a criminal? And, and so you've got a starting point. And from there, mm -hmm. the only thing they can use is a double standard, which you know is a logical mm -hmm. fallacy. Yeah, it's a legal plunder. Yeah, I use that a lot. You know, if I... You know, if I if I steal, it's called theft. If the government steals, it's called taxation, right? If I uh, if I if I kidnap and and uh, cage, you know, it's it's illegal. If the government does, it's called you know arrest and, and imprisonment, and <laughs> yeah, go down you go down the line. But um, awesome conversation, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. So if anyone wants to donate to um, our show, uh, we accept uh, uh, Bitcoin and um, Patreon. Uh, so the link's going to be down below for that. Um, so thesedsofliberty.com is our website. You can find uh, for the links for the uh, Facebook, the Twitter, um, iTunes, and Stitcher. You can hear us and YouTube. Um, so be sure to follow us there. So uh, thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot, Mark, for the uh, conversation. It was a blast, Mark. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I, yeah. I did. Too. Even I even though it. we might cogged and Danilo just sat sat there quietly. It was really <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's great, Sorry. It's great, great content. I was just listening. Force so, to Freedom uh, comes out Wednesday. New episode. Excellent. Donnie and uh, Donnie and Lloyd are in full full swing. Last week's episode was great. Uh, just really good banter between them too. Yeah, yeah. Before before I sign off, I just want to mention one thing. You know, I like Mark when you said that. Uh, you know, dissent is um, you know accepted and welcome because that's one thing that when you're talking to um, status is dissent is not welcome and <laughs> accepted. No. You know, and oftentimes you get banned and censored and insulted and slandered. Why and won't you just agree with me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that, and that's unfortunate. You know, because you know when you're like you say when you're when when you're challenging their sacred cows, it's very uncomfortable. And, and I think Bill Bupert said in a recent interview that I gave with him is sacred sacred cows make the best burgers. So that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, gotta gotta keep that in mind. We're gonna a, have to have Bill on. He's cool one dude. of my favorite. Well, 
Mark might might have bumped him up on the list, but he's one of my favorite people on the whole planet. <laughs> well, I've had I've I've had Bill I've known Bill for a while. We're friends, and and so awesome. there there is a special podcast we've been planning, but I don't think he's available right now, and I'm kind of waiting for him. Oh, to be if available. I can set it up and just sit there quietly and listen, I'll do it. Oh, well, you you could definitely listen in on it. It's uh, it, but it, yeah, we're, we've been friends for a while, and I usually get to see him here in Phoenix at the uh, Freedom Summit. Uh, good guy, good guy. So it's it's been a while since we spoke, and and because I know he's been unavailable, but uh, hopefully he's back soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a cool dude. Got, got an awesome website. So uh, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. This is the Seeds of Liberty uh, podcast. Uh, wish everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thanks, guys. Google volunteerism. <laughs>